All right, I'm standing here with Scott. Scott's a local boy. He's from the southern part of Arkansas, if I remember correctly. We're going to do a quick walk around with your trailer here. Now, tell me again, this is a 7x16, correct? Yeah, it's a 2018 RC trailer, 7x16, 7 foot height with the Vinos and the Slam. Right. Um, it originally came with 3,500 pound axles, and I put 6,000 pounders on there because I am a boondocker. I go off road a lot, and it's, I'd like to have strong axles and everything. So I've got a fully upgraded uh, undercarriage, you know, with all the wet shackles and the, the uh, equalizers and all that stuff. So it rides real nice. And it's, it's uh, made to handle tough terrain. Right? That's what it's yeah. made for, right. yeah. yeah. So it's not just, uh, I don't just camp in campgrounds. Um, I've, I've actually traveled for the last eight years on and off. Uh -huh. So um, this trailer has been a three and a half year venture for me now. Okay. And we will mention that uh, you're gonna have it on the market here before too long, is that correct? That is correct. I decided I'm going to go off-road and just travel part-time instead of full-time, so I don't need such a big trailer. And I want to sell this one and uh, buy probably like a 14-foot uh, box truck. Okay. Let me day. let me show everybody the clearance that you have here. That is Yeah, those awesome. are straight axles, and they're they're uh, overslung, so you get good, it's good ground clearance. I mean, if you look underneath, even on the, the black and gray tanks, have great ground clearance. Absolutely, absolutely, and that is so important, especially when it comes to plumbing, your sewer drains, and things like that. Yeah, when you look on the other side, you'll see that there's a good clearance off of the, the uh, valve trucks. Absolutely, uh, and of course, I see you have a, a 20 amp outlet or a 15 amp outlet right there. We'll go ahead and point that out before yes, we go around. Yeah, okay. yeah, and then the spotlights up here, oh, all yeah. the way around spotlight. There's the security light at the door, which is motion detection and light name. The spotlights come on and light up this whole area. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I was, I was smoking a brisket at 5 o'clock this morning. I needed the lights. And it worked out good for you, didn't it? It does. <laughs> and, of course, you've got a rear-facing camera here that you can use inside your vehicle. Is that right? Yes, yeah, so you can use it inside the vehicle, and you can also bring the monitor from the vehicle into the camper and use it for surveillance around your camper while you're camped. Awesome. So it's awesome. pretty cool. We'll see that inside. Awesome. And, um, you know, I put this extra storage space onto the back because I carry my smoker around, or I can put a generator on this side. Um, you know, you got to be careful how much weight you put back here, but you can easily put your bicycles and your grills back here, uh, propane tanks, whatever. Yeah, and and this tube is another source of storage as well. Is oh that yeah, correct? that's where my sewer uh, lines are. Oh, that's right. Yeah, okay. all the sewer lines. It it, it comes off. But, uh, you just stuff the sewer lines in there. Yeah. And then I actually have some plastic gutter, which I put in there, which are used to support my tube. Uh huh. So that's that all fits in there really nicely. Okay. And of course, the spare tire externally mounted. I reinforced that on the inside wall so that we can put that out here and not have to worry about it. And I have a five gallon carrier for uh, fuel for the generator. Okay, that was going to be my next question there, what that was. And of course, now we can see the other lights over here on this side, the side facing lights here. And you have a forward facing light as well and a camera. That is correct. Yeah, because the forward facing camera, that while you're going down the road, you can see, but you can point it down and see your trailer hitch and make sure that you're always hitched up correctly. That's a great idea. Everything's going good. I may uh, do a little modification on mine and do it that way too. We'll yeah. see what happens. Yeah, I'll on show that. you inside, you'll be able to see the picture. Yeah, okay. Because I can sit in the truck then. I don't have a backup camera on my old truck, so I just sit in there with the monitor on and I can look down and see the hitch well enough to back it up. Yeah, yeah, sure enough. And then, of course, you have a 30 amp inlet. Correct. Right there. And I see right below it is your city water inlet when you're connected to city water. That is correct. Okay. And, and then we have this just a regular fill because we can fill our 35 gallon tank and work off of our 12 volt pump. Oh, and that's what this is right here? Yeah, this that's is your... to fill, and then this is for the city water. Right. So, yep. Okay. And uh, of course, you utilize a black tank because you have a standard RV style toilet. That is correct. I have a Dometic 310 porcelain chair height, which is, you know, for big guys, we need that. <laughs> you know? Yeah, we do, don't we? Yeah. <clears throat> and you have two uh, propane bottles up here. I noticed that a minute ago. Yeah, with the uh, the dual crossover um, regulator and everything, so that works out real nice. You don't have to get up in the middle of a cold night and switch over your tank because your propane ran out on your heater. There you so. go. Did we mention the height on this thing? I don't it's remember. It's a seven foot height. Seven foot height. Yeah, it's seven okay. foot. So you have plenty of room inside. And then uh, this, this vent, I kept all my vents active, and this one actually goes into the bathroom, and there's a small 12 volt 
fan in there that I can turn on so when I'm taking a shower it vents straight out. Fantastic. Yeah. You gotta then, keep the moisture out of these things. Absolutely. And then of course the, you can see the forward facing camera here and the forward facing uh, light as well. Right here on the nose. And I sure like the slant nose. Trigger. It does help somewhat, you yeah. know. It does. Yeah, sure enough. All right. And then of course the equalizer hitch. And that'll go with the... Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, that, those are a must for these trailers. you got to have them. Yeah, I agree. I uh, We have one on ours. In fact, ours looks exactly like this. It might be the same one, and we really do like it. It works really well for us. Yeah. Really well. All right. Are we ready to go inside? Yes, sir. All right. We'll be back here in just a second. Okay, so this is the kitchen. I like a forward galley area. It fit really nice into the view area. As you can see, I got a two burner propane stove and a, a nice two bowl stainless sink. I, I, I'm, I, I gotta have a big sink because I cook and I love to cook. This area is for either a, a microwave or a toaster oven. I don't really use microwaves, so I put my toaster oven here. And it has a heat shield and a cooling fan over here so that you dissipate the heat out. Lots of extra storage up here. Um, you can put all your food and stuff up here. And then I always put paper towels and everything off to the corner of there, toilet paper. You know, where you can't get to them. And then uh, my nice pull down water faucet. Oh, there's a water filter on here and it's not an RO because RO's waste too much water. This is a uh, pure water filter down here. Okay, you it's, got it got hidden down here. Yeah, it's okay. hidden down there. It's tucked away really nice. Okay. And a uh, three, three stage filter puts out really nice water and it does not waste water. ROs, as you know, have to use three gallons of water for every one. Yeah, years ago I worked for Culligan. I'm familiar with ROs, reverse yeah. osmosis. Yeah. I love RO water. It's, it's in my house, but uh, here I wasted too much water. I had an RO system. It works great if you're in a campground, but if you're boondocking, forget it. Yeah. So I put this in and it works great. Good. It's good water. Good. So, and then my uh, XL um, tankless water heater, and it's positioned directly above the max air vent fan so that the heat vents out this way. It also pulls out from the shower area, which is over here. I have a 32 square shower and the Dometic toilet, and uh, it works really well. So, you know, you can pull your moisture out because the fan's here and also when you're cooking, the fan's right over the cooking area. So that was all predetermined and staged out so that it all, you know, circulates well in the house. All righty. Oh, and then this one last thing, this little table pulls up so when you need to, a space for cooking, you can pull this table up. There you go. There you go. It's extended. There you go. And uh, while we're standing here under the air conditioner, we did turn it off because this microphone is so sensitive. <laughs> but tell us about your air conditioner right quick before we move on. Yeah, it's a Furion 13.5 uh, BTU unit. And the Furion units are really nice because they come standard built in with the uh, quick start mode so that you can use it with your generators. Because when you start your ACs up, they draw a lot of amperage. If you have a quick start motor, the capacitor on them, it helps them start and helps them run on a generator. So this one's pretty set up for that. And it'll, if I turn this thing on, close up all the windows, it'll make an ice box out of this. Wow. Place. You got to, you got to wow. keep it on low. I understand. So, I've, yeah. I've heard other people uh, and read reviews about them, and the reviews have been good on them. The yeah. one, you know, most of the ones that I've read, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't we switch uh, positions here? And uh, we'll talk some more here in just a second. So uh, my refrigerator, uh, again, I, I cook everything I eat. I, I don't like going to restaurants, so I needed a big refrigerator. Uh, I found this one. It's uh, it's a unique. It's a solar refrigerator. It works on either 12 or 24 volts, and I have it hooked up to my 24 volt system. Uh, here's my electrical kind of closet. On this side is 24 volts, this side is 12 volt, that's 110 and that's the uh, charger from the roof. Comes down, everything comes through isolating circuits so you can turn everything off and isolate everything for maintenance. There's circuit breakers on everything in and out. So the uh, 24 volt comes down here, it powers the refrigerator and the batteries and it comes over here and it powers this 170 amp uh, Victron buck converter, 24 to 12 volt. Goes again, more circuits, more, more uh, uh, circuit breakers. Everything is actually wired for a 12 volt system, but I'm running a 24 volt system. So the wiring exponential is really safe because when you run a 24 volt system, you don't have to have as large of a wire because you're running less amperage. Exactly. So when you, if you wanted to convert this to a 12 volt, you can do that it, and you'd be more than safe with all of the wire gauging and sizing. Mm -hmm. So, and then the, the 110, really the only thing that powers is the AC unit. Um, if I put my toaster oven in up here, over here, and then some 110 outlets around here for charging a computer or something like that, but everything else is LED and works on low voltage. Cool. So, cool. and of course we've got our mini, mini furnace, mini wood stove here. Um, 
it works great. It um, I actually burn pellets on it rather than burning wood. I use this little metal canister and fill it with pellets, and that'll burn for an hour and a half per fill, and it puts on a nice, even, mild heat. Whereas if you burn wood, you're going to burn it burns really hot, and it'll get hot in here. I mean, it'll almost cook you out. Hmm. It gets so hot. But uh, the, this is all designed with fire brick up here and a fire plate. None of this ever gets hot, and this will get all the way up to you know 450 degrees on the on the chimney flue. But uh, the roof has never gotten hot. And once again, a, a cargo trailer is a metal roof. There's no vinyl or wood up there, so right, you're pretty good and you're pretty safe. Right. And then, of course, all my dressers here, more storage up here for food and whatever. I used to have an air conditioning unit in here that said flush. Just a window air conditioner, but it did not work. So I took that out and put in the Furion. Okay. So that's why there's a patch on the outside and there's this, this on the side. But uh, more drawers and such down here. Uh, <laughs> <That's fun. laughs> and then uh, over here in the bed area, I've got plenty more storage over here. And this is actually for my laptop. And when you put your laptop in here, you can close this up and hit a secret latch up here. No one would even know it's there. Really? You hide your, you hide your laptop. No in there. kidding. That's pretty cool. It is. It is. Mm -hmm. So, and then underneath here, this lifts up for storage. Or if you've got more people you want to sleep, just put another mattress down there. <laughs> you get in from here. But that's where my wife sleeps. Oh. <laughs> she, she likes that area. What's what's her name? Socks. Say that again. Socks. Socks. S O K S. And she's an 11 year old border collie. Well, she's just as sweet as can be. Aren't you, Socks? Yeah. So, yeah, she certainly is. So, you know, pretty much this area I had set up because I, I do jewelry as a hobby. I make silversmithing and lapidary art. So I had my stone cutting and polishing machines here and all my tools and everything underneath here. Mm -hmm. So this is all set up as a workbench and all this storage area and everything up here. So, I mean, for a, a full timer, there's so much storage in here. There's so many places you can put your clothes, your knickknacks, your cooking, your utensils, your food. You know, I use this for four of them for, for clothes and the rest for food and more food up there. Uh, it's built for living in. It's, it's not like a weekend warrior where you don't have space to put stuff. There you go. There you go. So. Did we talk about how big your gray tank and, and uh, black tank was? Okay, my black tank is uh, the Rec Pro 15 gallon tank and I had mentioned that it fits between the 16 inch on center rafters and the, the floor. So that was perfect. And then the gray tank is a 25 gallon tank out of, it, comes, it would be used for like a catering truck or something. And so they have 25 for gray, 15 for black. There's a 35 gallon water tank down here with okay. the uh, sure flow pump over here. Okay. And they have a valve set up so you can either turn on for city water or for just, you know, the tank pressure. Okay. And down there is also the uh, Progressive Industries EMS, the electronic management system which is hardwired so you don't have to plug it into the post you're not going to go off and forget it <laughs> and it's it's a blessing it saved me a lot of times because a lot of these campgrounds are way under voltage and way bad i understand and then we've had issues ourselves with the uh, lightning storms oh yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely so uh, the progressive industries is well worth it it protects from over boost under boost and all kinds of out of phase and frequency and everything else aha uh -huh. now how big is your bed it is a uh, 48 by 75 so it's it's actually considered a full, but the 48 is a little bigger. I, I have mattresses like memory foam um, cushions that are in here that I made into the bed. And I find them a lot better because I don't like RV mattresses and I don't like spring mattresses because I'm a side sleeper. Okay. So, you know, the memory foam mattress in here is really nice. Yeah, we nice have a memory sleep. foam mattress. We love it. We really do. It's yeah. a, they're not for everybody, but for us, we really like it. It's right. cool. Right, right. Yeah. Right. And this is your outside, oh, this yeah. is your monitor. We're so, going to talk about that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's just that forward view and rear view. When I'm in the truck, I can just hit the channel. And um, so I'm looking here, and you can just barely see the hitch down here. If it was in the light, you'd be able to see the trailer hitch so that I can back up to it. And then uh, this one is what's ever in back of me. So when I'm riding down the road, I've got my rear view on. I can see trucks coming up behind me. I can see cars, you know, the little Prius cars that want to ride me. And <laughs> but I mean, you can also keep track of your gear. If something starts falling off, you see something in the little monitor going. Oh, yeah. That's mine. <laughs> oh, and there's something else that we did not talk about while we were outside. Hmm. Is your solar panels on top? Oh, yes, that's right. Um, I have eight 100 watt Renogy solar panels and they come down into the uh, 40 amp uh, MPPT tracker from uh, Renogy also. 
So uh, yeah, I'm pretty much set up. It's a 24 volt system, like I said, off of the off of the roof. It could be wired to 12 volt. You could change the whole thing to 12 volt, but mm -hmm. uh, for the most part, 24 yeah. is more efficient. Yeah, well, that's what our system is. Ours is yeah. a 24 volt system, and yeah. we're we're happy with it. Still tweaking it here and there and stuff like that, but uh, you're always hey, going to tweak it. It's a learning process as you go. It's all there is to it. You know, 37 years as an aircraft mechanic, and then I came into this stuff and started doing 12 volt electrical, and I'm going, what? Mm -hmm. I hear you. <laughs> I had to do a lot of research, but I, I got it together. I didn't have Marvin though, but you know. Well, yeah, unfortunately Marvin couldn't be at this rendezvous. Um, they were up in the Colorado area because uh, they had a new grandbaby, so they've oh, been spending. Oh, there you go. They've been spending about three months up there. And the last time I talked to Marvin, of course, he, he added on to his uh, solar uh, on top of his trailer, and he tripled the size of his battery bank. Wow. He has yet to plug in. No kidding. Yeah, has yet to plug in. He's been in Colorado for three months. Oh, no. So, yeah. It's, it's kind of like unreal. torturing a kid with Christmas presents <laughs> under the tree, you know. Nice so he, he sends me text now and then, you know, saying, well, our, uh, our solar panels are just really getting with the program, you know, and we're able to run our air conditioner whenever we need to. and and our water heater whenever we need to, you know, and, and no problems ever. And, and of course, he's just trying to rub it in because he's got such a big, bigger system than we do, you know. Well, I was truly amazed. One time I came into a campground and I plugged into the pole and came in here and it was hot and I turned on the air conditioner and I let it run. It was about 45 minutes later and also I look over at the power meter and it's like down to 26 volts. I'm like, what? It was running off the batteries. I oh, had really? never hit the switch on the plug. Ah. So, but within 45 minutes it had burned probably, you know, uh, of 400 amps, it probably burned 250 amp hours. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, the air conditioner can run off of batteries. Yeah. Not well, for very can. long, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything else you want to add before we go ahead and shut her down? No, I think that's it. I appreciate it very much, and I appreciate uh, you and Deb and what you do for the community. Your I Ride Tiny Homes is an incentive for a lot of people, you know, whether they're full timers or not. Well, we appreciate that. You have no idea how much we appreciate that. And this, this uh, rendezvous has been absolutely wonderful for Deb and I. And every time when we go in and try to settle down for the night, all we think about is all the good things that happened all during the day. Yeah. You know, we're What's tired. Yeah. yeah. We're right. tired, but we still can't go to sleep because we keep talking about this and that, you know, and all the wonderful people and how they all come together uh, with the same thoughts in mind, you know, people right. that had known each other. Like-minded in this world yes, is sir. a hard thing to find. I know. A good but, thing to uh, find. But uh, we definitely have uh, a great family that is growing uh, every day and, yeah. and we are so appreciative of that and and flattered as well you know I can I cannot say that enough how flattered we are is there an email or something like that some contact information you want to leave with us before sure we go? Um, anybody wants information on the trailer I've got um, gigabytes worth of data and you know manuals and pictures and everything else and you can contact me at roguebull at gmail.com that's spelled R O G U E B U L L at gmail.com <laughs> Let's get a good <laughs> shot right there like that. And then I'll make sure that that email is uh, in the description and also in a pinned comment yeah. at the beginning of the comment thread. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty. Well, we're going to go ahead and sign off for now. This is Bill and Scott. And Socks. And Socks. Don't forget my wife. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to say this like we always do. You know our tagline. We're not camping. We're living it. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Scott. Thank you, Bill. All right.